Did Yami kill Siobhan Dane, bro? No, he didn't. He was accused of something that he didn't do. You know what I'm saying? He was he was accused of something that he didn't do. And nah, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. Did you know Siobhan Dane? Yes, I did. That's family. It's like family to me as well. Can you tell us a little bit about her? Oh man, she was a beautiful young lady, man. Come from, you know what I'm saying? Well, well, well structured, put together family. You know, ain't nobody perfect. Um, she was young when I got locked up, so she was practically like a, a baby I had already. She was probably like maybe nine or ten when I when I got locked up. You know what I'm saying? Before the incident took place, where her life was uh, unfortunately taken. All right, so you're saying that Yami was not the notorious killer that people portrayed him as? Nah. I mean, let me say this. He was, as they say today, he was a step in the savage at 11. Don't get it twisted. But he was, he, he, he wouldn't have did that to a, you know how somebody, you know how you could be advanced, you could be ahead of your time. Uh, yeah. He was kind of ahead of his time. And I think he had enough respect and dignity about himself, even as a 11 year old, to not hurt nobody innocent. He wouldn't have never, he wouldn't have never did that. Right. You know, um, it was a Vlad TV interview. You know, Vlad is infatuated with the Lil Yami story. It was a Vlad TV interview with a old school Chicago original gangster that goes by the name of Dirk Akron, right? Mm -hmm. And he said that Siobhan's father was a well-known gang leader and that's the reason why whatever happened to Yami actually happened to Yami. Is that true? That's a lie. He don't know nothing about what's going on. You know what I'm saying? He don't know nothing. He 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 he, he don't know nothing about that sector or or as they was we called it the dynasty or from which Yami was from, which is the dynasty where I'm from. He yes a lie. That had nothing to do with it. Okay, so what did you think when you heard Tupac expressing his feelings about the Yami situation? Um, as far as Tupac is concerned, because I, I I I really looked up to Tupac as far as hip hop is concerned, and, and you know, I just feel like Tupac being a, a rev of the uh, son of revolutionaries, and you know, Tupac had one foot in, one foot out. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, he understood the streets. He was gangster, but at the same time, he was uh, the son of a Black Panther members. Um, and I feel like he just was expressing his expression on the situation, and he didn't even really know what he was talking about. He just was, I don't know. I can't speak for him, but I feel like he was just expressing what he felt he needed to express at that time, for as far as what his concern was, or what his viewpoints was concerning the situation with, without having no idea of the details or the depths of what, what it was. Did Black Disciple members kill Lil Yami? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I know, I I, I can tell you this, I, the ones that was charged now. Was he killed by his own gang? I don't know, I can't tell you that. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. I was, like I said, I was incarcerated at the time. I just know that, man, he didn't kill Siobhan. You know what I'm saying? And the people that was accused of of him um, losing his life, uh, it's unfortunate that they had to suffer to spend a lot of that, their life in prison for something that they had they didn't do. All right, back to Tupac in the Yummy situation. Tupac actually um, <laughs> thought that Black Disciples and Gangster Disciples were the same. He actually had a concert in Chicago into where he told the crowd of black disciples and gangster disciples that they were bitches for what they did to Lil Yami and got ran off the stage in Chicago. Um, they almost got killed. I do believe it's another Vlad TV interview with one of his entourage that actually discussed that situation, man. Uh, what do you think about Tupac coming to Chicago saying those things about disciples? <laughs> He should have knew what the fuck he was coming to do because you, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't, I, man, I didn't even know that. You know what I'm saying? You really, uh, I didn't even know that part. You really, uh, this is something new to me. Um, with the fact that, uh, like, being as as wise and knowledgeable as Pac was, 
you should have known not to come to a city of gangsters and and get on stage and say something like that. You you that that's a death wish. Cause you don't know, you know what I'm saying? You you don't you, you don't know. That's why I, I get mad when I see a lot of people posting stories about Yummy or I'm trying to make movies about Yummy and they don't even know what the true what the real is and then have no respect or or regard to the to, of the family. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, you know, I've actually been reaching out to his family members, also Siobhan Dane's family members, to get them onto the show to tell their part of the story. And I actually, you know, talked to the brother of Siobhan Dane, and it was a very interesting conversation. I just don't think that he's ready to come on to the show and share that information. So you were locked up at the time. Yeah, I was incarcerated at the time. Would he have been murdered if you was out? I don't think he would have. I don't think he would have. I think the narrative of that situation would have went different if I was here. You know what I'm saying? If I was on the streets at the time, you know, I, that's what I believe. And, and, and if anybody watches this interview, I don't care what they think or what they say. It's just the heart that I had and the person, the type of person that I was. You know what I'm saying? And if that was the case, then I would have had to go too. Hey, ain't nobody keeping it real. And I'm one that's going to keep it real. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, about anything. And it's like I'm unapologetic about anything that I say. And I'm, you know what I'm saying, I stand on it. You know, and it's something that needs to be talked about because the truth needs to be told, you know what I'm saying, about this situation because it's been perpetuated for so long. And nobody really spoke out about it. You know what I'm saying? I know what I know what I know what I know. And I can stand on what I know, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I just feel like it's something that needs to be addressed. What do you think about Vlad TV? You know, every time somebody from Chicago or in somewhat a fashion, you know, is connected to this yummy situation. What do you think about Vlad always bringing he, first up? First of all, first of all, he's a journalist. That's first and foremost. He's a journalist. Yeah. Um he deals with the news you can't get mad at a person for doing their job but i feel like the way he does his job and how he try to go back do it makes it, it it's, it's kind of suspect you know what i'm saying it makes you feel like it's something like it, it is some type of like trying to set niggas up to set themselves up to but then when you do an interview as as the interview in the interview e you should already have knowledge to be able to have a conscience to, to listen before you speak and be able to deal with the questions at hand and answer them appropriately if you choose to even get it and get into that arena. Glad and uh, glad and Tupac, they entertain us. They good at what they do. You know, all of them talking from a whole different part of the map. So they don't know nothing but what they being told. Focus to connect. How did this situation affect the hood as far as you know? When I call home, and I got the call, man, I didn't eat for like a week. Like I almost got sick, cause I was like, actually I didn't get the call, I was in the day room. And if you've ever been to the county, you know, we watch the news at certain times, that's the mandatory. And I saw it come across the screen when I ran to the phone. I actually couldn't believe it, bro. You know, cause that's like my little brother. You know what I'm saying? Like really like my little brother. Um. And it's like it did something to me and it messed the hood up because it's like, it wasn't messed, it didn't mess the hood up. It's like, because Siobhan was in it and then I don't like how the news, I don't know how they, how they portrayed them. I don't like how they portrayed them and they made them to be this monster. You know, I don't like how they portrayed his mother. I don't like how they betrayed his family. And, and the way they portrayed them, how they put them out there, and then it just it just made the it turned the hood dark. It's like it put a black cloud over the hood, and it made the bridge the it made the gap between the parties so abroad that it just set a blaze to a, a blaze to the streets. It it affected the hood in a, in, a, in a traumatizing way, man. It shook the hood up, actually. You know. And, and and just the news, they're not on our side. It's so much propaganda, 
so many lives, you know, the only thing they're looking for views and it's all economical based for them. So that everybody's looking for a dollar. They're not really taking consideration um, the feelings and hearts of the family. I always say, let me say this. Let me say this. I've been a product of the environment um, at the time, it was a season of living and it was about survival. So I'm not going, I'm not ashamed or I'm not going to downplay who I was and what I was and things that I did. But now I look back on it as uh, you get older, I realize that we lose twice. We suffer because, and it puts both families in a state of depression. It puts the family in the depression of the loss of the, of the, of the deceased. It pushed them because they lost a loved one. And then whoever did this or whoever was falsely accused or incarcerated or locked up for it or judged for it, like, it pushed their family because now they, they family members have to suffer because they have to go through something. Even if a person did it or didn't do it or have a, it work, it, it works. It's just like two families on two separate sides have to go through this lifetime of hurt, pain, and agony because of the loss, you know what I'm saying, of, of, vi of the loss from violence and, and, the, and the ignorance in the environment. But the media and the system don't make it no better the way they depict it and put it out there, you know, because people draw, people, people, some, some people don't know how to dig or analyze or think for themselves. They let the system think for them or what they see think for them. So the news media and all that, they don't make it no better the way they, they try to put the sauce on top of it just to, for views or just for whatever it is they doing it for. That's what they do. It's just, just a game. It's a big game, man. That's all it is. All right, so Focus the Connect was arrested and locked up when this whole situation happened. You were out free in the land when this whole situation happened? Yeah. How hot did that make the hood? <laughs> And you couldn't do nothing. I mean, it was a lot like, okay, like you know how they just focusing on that one right there, like right? that situation. You gotta understand. That was that was when the war between both factions was went was super local. It was everywhere. It was broke being in local. You know, they had some things that was going on because like they really wanna tell you a lot of the the, the original PDG war stuff. It didn't start in the hundred. That stuff started in like England. Now they really, it wasn't, they had that shit going on like that. It was, it was, it was really them. And then it started spreading. It really spread when it got out there. That was actually, I would say, the, really the point of when it went, who you with? Eight ball was one side was them, one side was the GDs, one side was the BDs. It really wasn't no cool shit like that at first. Like, it just started tricking from where it tripped from. And next thing you know, it was when supernova. It was on. Trades both ways of terminology. Um, not to get too deep into history, but you know, as if, if anybody. Uh, you got the Black Gang's Disciples, you got the Gang's Disciples, and you got the, the BDs. And Trades both ways it represents like the, the new breeds of Black Gangsters and uh, the BDs. That's all it is. Were you out when this first GDBD war started? Um, yeah, I was out. I was out. I was out. What was this like? Because one day you're brothers with the GDs, and the next day you're at war with the GDs. How was that? Crazy. It's crazy. I mean, when you're young, you don't think about it, but reflecting back on it, um, it was crazy. Because it's like, you literally going to war with people you love. Like, how does that happen? You know, how does that happen? But I look at it like this. You know, it's a thing that say history always repeats itself. I'm a, I'm a spiritual person, I'm not a religious person, but I'm a deep spiritual person. And how I look at it, the organizations, GDs, BDs, Vice Lords, all this stuff, is no different than the Sadducees, the uh, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Uwebites, the, the Amorites, and different tribes that was in. I look at them like gangs. 
because they some that didn't get along. If they, if, if they, this is something that's been, this is biblical. So it's like, it's just a perpetuation of something that was biblical that came into a reality. The only thing that changed was the names and the lifestyle of how society was at the time for all this life itself. So for you, and, 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 and I say that to say this, some of them were family members and this, they, they broke off and somebody did this and did that and wanted to start their own thing and it built up and it just, you know, it just caused what it caused and did what it did. So like they say, nothing new, nothing is new up under the sun. But it's real, it was real, man. That's depressing itself, think about it. 